Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we will use the linear algebra to solve the integrals, and this is a very creative way to solve this integral. So let's get started. And the idea is to use the linear expansion to solve this problem. And this idea is from the linear algebra. So that's why in the beginning I said we use the linear algebra to solve this problem. So first, let's see an example. So on the left hand side, we have a simple two dimensional vector. And then this vector can be written in this way. And here, 1, 0 and 0, 1, they are bases. Square root 2 and pi, they are expansion coefficients. So for the two dimensional vector, it can be written as the combination of bases and the coefficients. You may ask, how is this one related to our problem? So for our problem, we will use the same idea. And later you will see, we will write i as a combination of two bases and two expansion coefficients. So first, let's construct two integrals as bases. So instead of use the geometric vectors as bases, here we use the integrals as bases. The first base is i1, which is constructed in this way. And it looks trivial because the denominator and numerator, they are cancel out. So the integral is just respect to the number 1. So this integral equals to x. And note that here we only consider the function part. So we temporarily ignore the constant c. And we will put back constant c at the very end. And the second base is i2, and we construct it in this way. You may ask why we do it in this way, and you will see the reason very soon. And then we use the substitution. We let u equals to the denominator, and then we got du. And if you compare the terms colored in red, you will find they are exactly the same. So that's the reason why we construct the numerator in this way. So we just plug in, and then we got a very simple integral with respect to u. So we got log u. And then we just replace u with the substitution. So we got here. And again, we ignore the constant c here. So you can see, we already found the two bases, i1 and i2. To solve the integral i, we only need to find the coefficient c1 and c2, then we are done. So let's see how do we find c1 and c2. So here I summarize the results so far. And next, we just plug in those i, i1 and i2 into this equation. And don't worry, we don't need to solve this integral. And here, actually, we only need to express the fraction on the left-hand side by using the fractions on the right-hand side. And the denominator cancel out. So we got here. Then we just put them into different colors for sine and cosine. For right-hand side, we just expand it, and then we collect the coefficients for the sine and the cosine term. And for the left-hand side, because there's no cosine term, and then we just put a 0 times cosine x. Because sine x and cosine x, they are linearly independent functions. So that means the coefficient in front of the sine x on the left-hand side must equal to the coefficient in front of the sine x on the right-hand side, and similarly for the cosine term. And then we got these two equations. Next, we just solve it, and we got here. So we have got the two coefficients, c1 and c2. Here, I put all results we got so far. So next, we just plug in. So we got the result for this integral i. And remember to put this constant c back. And the final result for this integral is here. On this last slide, I also put the result for the cosine integral here. And you can practice by using this method. If you compare the results for these two integrals, you can see, for example, the position of a and b, and also for the sign difference. For the top one is minus sign, and for the bottom one is plus sign. So they are kind of anti-symmetric. And that's all for today.
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel if you like it.